Hi all, Craig and Latte here. It's that time again where I bring you my tips, facts, or experience that you may or may not find helpful. Regardless of your opinion on the expansion as a whole, Shadowlands has an intense amount of collectibles. Transmog, mounts, pets, and much more that come in a variety of epic styles. The main thing you'll notice once you begin collecting is that a large portion of these are connected to the Four Covenants. These are the main hub-like feature of the expansion, so it makes sense. And you will notice that as you look at each piece to buy from these vendors, most of them require two currencies, Anima and Grateful Offerings. We've already gone over how to get Anima, so why don't we explore where Grateful Offerings come from? It's a bit more nuanced. First, what is a Grateful Offering? Grateful Offerings are a currency you get from doing specific tasks that you'll use to buy collectibles such as Mog, Mounts, Pets, Toys, and even Illusions from your Covenant vendors. What makes this currency stand out, though, is unlike how the Redeemed Souls currency is Covenant-specific, Grateful Offerings are in your Currency tab and stay with you even when you move Covenants. And here's what I mean by that. When you receive some Grateful Offerings, they actually go here to your Currency tab. This is important because unlike Redeemed Souls, which are held by your Covenant, you hold your Offerings. You can actually farm for Grateful Offerings while a part of any Covenant, and then spend them in a different one. This also means that you can easily farm all the Offerings from each Covenant each day in order to buy stuff faster. So, since that means you can stack up this currency with all four Covenants at the same time, let's look at everything you can do to get all these. The first thing you'll want is to make sure your Anima Conductor is rank 3 in all four Covenants. This will give you access to the activities that grant Grateful Offerings, and its rank also affects how many Offerings you'll get from Covenant Callings. So, as I just mentioned, Covenant Callings are also a big source. If you have rank 3 of the Anima Conductor in the Covenant you're a part of while you do the callings, you can get between 10 and 20 and sometimes even more Grateful Offerings per calling. That's also partly why it's important to have all four Anima Conductors at rank 3, since we'll be swapping Covenants frequently. Now we have the Anima Conductor activities. The activity types are the same in each Covenant zone, just in different locations. These are a World Quest, two Dailies, two Rares, and a Treasure. The point is to do all of them for the max amount of offerings each day, so here's the order I like to do them in to boost my efficiency. First, check the Anima Conductor in your Covenant Sanctum to activate all of these locations. They need to be activated, or you can't do them. Also pick up all the callings available in your Sanctum. Some of the Conductor activities will count for these, depending on what's available. Then, head to the daily spot and pick those up first. These are different each day, but always seem to span across the entire zone, so you can do these while traveling to the other activities. Now, go do the World Quest. This seems to be almost the same every day, with minor differences, and it's really, really easy. Next, you can do the two rares. There's an easy one and a hard one. If you're only level 60, you may struggle with the harder rares here. I recommend being level 70 for all of this, that way you have no issues, but the choice is yours. Now, you've got the treasure. You'll need to do a very minor challenge to loot it, but it shouldn't take you more than a minute or two to do so. Super easy. Now, with the World Quest, Rares, and Treasure done, check the progress of your two dailies and the callings. If you're not already done with them, complete the dailies now, and finish the callings, if they are for the zone you're currently in. If they want you to do activities in another zone, don't worry about completing it until you get to that zone for that Covenant's activities. This'll reduce travel by a lot. 
If the calling wants you to do stuff in the Maw, it's up to you if you feel like completing that one. Then turn in the dailies and the callings that you could complete, and head back to Oribos and swap to the next covenant. Then rinse and repeat this same order of activities in each zone for all four covenants. This usually only takes me about an hour to do all of these activities for all four covenants on one character. And I get anywhere between 60 and 80 grateful offerings depending on RNG from the callings, and if I made sure to do everything. There's actually another strong source of grateful offerings, and you're gonna love this. Remember that Patterns Within Patterns weekly quest I told you to do in the Anima video? Which, by the way, if you've not seen the Anima video, you'll certainly want to. We need hundreds of thousands, I wish I was kidding, of Anima to get all this done, so go check that out. The link for that is in the description below. Anyway, that is the Xerath Mortis weekly, which you can complete by killing rares, looting treasures, and doing world quests there in Xerath Mortis. When you complete it, you get not only a good chunk of anima, which we want anyways, you'll get between 10 and 20 grateful offerings. This is a must-do on all the alts you're farming offerings with. Now, if you haven't realized it yet, you need a stupid amount of this currency. Thousands of offerings, in fact, if you want to buy everything from all four covenants for all four armor types, and that also includes cosmetic non-armor type sets, weapons, mounts, pets. So, for collectors like me, this means we need to knuckle down and farm up an egregious amount of grateful offerings in order to unlock and buy everything. Especially if we want to do this on multiple characters to buy all the weapon and armor transmog. So, to try to cut down on time and make this efficient, first I have to choose a minimum of four alts who will be farming these offerings. I'm choosing these alts based on armor type and weapons that they can learn in order to be able to collect everything on, well, you know, as few alts as possible, which would be four. And my choice classes are Paladin, Hunter, Demon Hunter, and Mage. Now you don't have to go with these ones that I've chosen. Warrior is likely the best for weapon variety, as they can learn everything but wands and glaives, and of course they wear plate. But Paladin is my main, so that's the one I'm going with for plate. Warrior can also learn staves, shields, daggers, and bows slash guns, but those are all covered by my Paladin, Hunter, and Mage across the three of them, who I need the armor types for anyways. And any of the three clothies will work, you know, Priest, Mage, or Warlock, as they can all learn daggers and wands. Mage just happens to be my favorite. And of course, only Demon Hunters can learn Glaives. So, Demon Hunter it is for leather. Now with my four alts chosen, I'm doing a few things on them first. Number one, make sure the chosen alts are all level 70, or max level for future reference. That way I don't have any difficulty issues. Number two, complete the 9.0 covenant campaign on all four covenants for all four alts. So yes, I'm doing each covenant four times, four times four, that's what, 16? Eh, it's all right, it could be worse. And number three, I need to upgrade at least the Conductor to rank three in all four Covenants. That way I get the most offerings and I have access to all of the Conductor content, which gives offerings as well. Though I'm actually going to do all the upgrades anyways, because these four that I've chosen are going to be my quote unquote Covenant character mains for future reference. Did you know I stream on Twitch now? I do everything from transmog to leveling to gold making, and I'm live five days a week to chat with, so come hang out! And there we have it! If you think I've missed information, or you want to request I do a specific guide, let me know in the comments below. Even if I don't answer you, I just might add your idea to my list! As always, thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte.